morning, Mr. Michael Celiars. How are you doing? Good morning. Man? How are you, man? All right. Tell us, where are you at today? Where am I at? I'm at the Mohegan Sun the day before the big tournament. So tomorrow we got the top six guys in the country. Myself, Jake Babbitt, John Bazink, Kenny Hughes, Kevin Bongard, and Mr. Todd Hutchins, my friend Todd Hutchins. How you doing, Mr. Todd Hutchins? I'm good, Gary Roberts. Nice to be here. Where are you at? I'm in the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. How does that feel to be here among some of these top guys? This is going to be rough. <laughs> this is going to be rough. It's kind, of, it's kind of exciting sitting in there seeing all those... those uh, Top caliber people standing around there talking. That kind of. I mean, it's. Ex I mean, I was a little kind of tired sleeping this morning, but just seeing those guys walk in, you're starting to. I mean, I'm ready to arm wrestle now. <laughs> now I want to pull. You know, I can't wait till tomorrow. Two buys, left and right. My my streak continues. Two weeks in a row. Yeah, it's, it's good. You know, you got to give the old guys a, a little bit of an advantage. Excited to be here. Um, the older I get in this sport, the more I realize I'm lucky to be here. I, you know, I've worked hard for it, but also I, I don't take this for granted. Being one of the guys invited here. I'll tell you a little story. Just this last week, uh, the first time I got on the site and looked on Zabon's rankings for probably six months to a year, the last thing I knew, I was ranked number two under John, okay? Well, me and the kids look up here. I'm looking at things saying I'm number four, okay? And out of the top 20 wrestlers, I used to be in the top 10. Now I'm down on 17. So my 13-year-old boy, one of the last things he says to me before I leave, hits me in the shoulder and says, Dad, you better step up and do something or you ain't going to make the rankings. Let me read some of these news. We got John Brzezink, Kevin Bongard, Kenny Hughes, Todd Hutchings, Jacob Abbott, and Mike Sullyars. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tough guys, man. And you guys all just arm wrestled last week. Last weekend, out in Chehalis, Washington. Hot day outside. Out 70, 80 degrees outside in that parking lot. <laughs> so how do you, is this something you could do? Could you arm wrestle a big event every weekend? Is that possible? It was just I could, small. but I didn't really have any long matches last weekend. I mean, I won fast and I lost fast. So, to be honest, I could arm wrestle Sunday of last weekend. So, yeah, my right arm has been good all week. Last week was the first time I've gone home without a check in probably six or seven years from a tournament. Really? And so... So what? Was it a fluke? Is it going to happen? It will, what will happen, happen tomorrow? Happen. Kevin Bongard. You know, I'm going to wrestle good. I'm, I'm stronger. I'm healed up. My back feels better. My leg's not pulsating. I mean, injuries. They're not arm injuries, but they're injuries, and they do affect me. I feel good. I feel good. I mean, last week at the uh, Washington tournament in Chehalis, I ain't perform up to par. So it's this this week, you know, it's a whole different day. It's a whole different day just moving ahead, man. Just gotta get some redemption. That's it. So how did how did you fall out of the last turn of the last week? What happened? First match okay, the first match I lost was with John Brzezink. He felt good. His hand was tight, he felt really good, he was on. And then my next match was with Kenny Hughes. I lack it just lacks a little bit at the start. He got me into his position. I wasn't ready to jump to where he wanted me to go, and I did. And it was just a fight in the hook, but I got caught out of position. And he caught me on that. So what are you going to do different? I'm going to pop his hand back. Else. And everybody else's. Yeah. What is it? Shahalis compared to the national TV format, is there a different kind of... I mean, you're going to be on TV. How does that feel to me? I'm not... I mean, I'm here to arm wrestle. Everything else, I'm not paying attention to. I mean, I'm just paying attention to who's across from me on the table, and that's it. Can you come in, arm wrestling a couple battles last week, and come in and be be on top of your game? Oh um, yeah, I feel pretty good. I iced it most every day last week. You know, right in there, trying to stretch it out. Hand feels good. Got a few different techniques. I'm gonna try against a couple of the guys this week. So. 196.5. Is that a comfortable way for you? Do you have yeah, I never really get much over 200, 202. Making 198 speed skate. I've been at, I've been under 202 pounds since uh, Unified Nationals on what 2004. It's been about a year. So you guys are going to be on the best damn sports show. Yes, sir. That, now you were on the first one. I was on the first one. Big did, red tomato. That damn close from winning that prize, man. And what was that? Actually, one ref said I won. <laughs> What's it like sitting at home watching TV scene? You guys it's frustrating because every time I see it, I think I'm going to win that match again. <laughs> like I was, so, oh, I was close. But uh, you got to do something different today or tomorrow. 
Yes, and then last Todd week. Is a, is an animal. Last week you controlled. I had, I, I had a little bit of an advantage. I mean, I had a very good draw last week. Uh, my brother, Bill, who's been training, extremely powerful. A lot of people underestimate him because he's, he just he's, he hasn't been in the sport for three four years now. But he's he's a tank, and um, they went to war, so it was a huge advantage for me. Um, I expect a lot tougher match from Todd. And your tomorrow. intensity yeah. level seems to me a little bit higher. Oh, it's it's always it's always yeah. yeah. No, I was I was focused. I'm feeling good. If uh, if I'm not if I'm not aches and pains, I'm uh, still at 41, able to move a, you know fairly quick and aggressive when I don't have the aches and pains. And, um, I knew everybody was a little bit beat down last week. So it's a little easier to be aggressive like that when you know your your competition has uh, got the edge, edge taken out. Well, you John, saw him arm wrestle last week. John, John's the favorite. He, he'll always be the favorite. But last week I think John had the easier bracket to come out of. Um, the other ones in that, that you listed I think were all on the lower half. They had to pull each other before they even got close to John. So the same thing. It, that class depends on the bracket. If you put uh, Todd Hutchings and John Brzezink together first match of the day, yeah. um, they could have what they had at uh, Pull at the Plaza last year. And that opens the door for a couple other people for a move here or a move there. And so the draws mean a lot. Um, I'm, I'm sure the top two will be the same, you can imagine. Jacob Abbott's the sleeper. And, um, of course, Kevin Bongard's got to be pretty fresh. But I still think Todd's a touch better than everybody except for John. And as long as John sticks to his game plan and, and, and hits and finishes, but if John gets overconfident and starts playing, he could potentially get into some trouble. But I think that uh, he's pretty much uh, a Sherlock as they come. Right hand, and I believe I pulled the winner of Mike Solaris and Kenny Hughes. Who would you rather? Your first match, does it matter to you? Who do you get? Do you um, care less? No, out of, those, out of those two guys, no. That's, that's going to be a good. Good warm up. Good warm up. John Rosin, can anybody stop you right now? Uh, I like to think no. But I'm sure there's somebody out there that first thinks differently. My best feeling is I think first and second is still going to be me and Brazil. Okay? I hope to change the outcome from last weekend where, where Brazil just smashes me to the pad in half a second. I hope that changes. But I still suspect me and Brazil will be in the top two. Brzezink will probably get there undefeated, and depending on the draw, if I have him in my bracket, I suspect I'll, you know, I might lose the first match to him. I don't know. If I got to do something different, that's that's for damn sure. I can't go in there with these. I can't just get opened up and pinned open it so fast. Oh, the heavyweight class, uh, Matt Gardner, he's looking kind of slim. You know, I was expecting him to be a little bit bigger. Travis, you know, everyone's looking pretty slim. Michael Todd's looking huge. <laughs> How would you? He'll battle. As everybody else thinks, I would say, I think it's Travis. He looks odd. I mean, that guy looks stronger than ever. He's looking good. The heavyweight class. I like John Brzezink to be in that class today. <laughs> I think John could go up and win that. <laughs> you know, uh, I feel real good about Ron Bath winning that. Depending on the draw, but I think Ron Bath's here to here to that. That noisy boy out of Charlestown, West Virginia. <laughs> I think that Southern boy is going to put him down. I'm um, feeling okay. We're here at the Mohegan Sun, 10 in the morning, somewhere around there. Getting ready to do the meeting and the seating of the brackets to find out who, uh, who my first victim is. It's my road to domination. All right, we've got Michael Todd, Tom Nelson, Matt Gurner, Travis, Eric Wolfell, and Ron Bath. That's quite a list. Pretty good arm wrestlers. Is there is there a person you'd like to match up with first? Uh, I mean, of course, I'd like to go ahead and get the Matt Gardner thing away from. Uh, you know, stop hearing people say that they think he's better than me. So it'd be great to get him early. And what's it like knowing you're going to be on TV? No, it's still humbling. I, 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 I am. I'm a very humble person. I don't like to <coughs> play Travis Pageant a whole lot, but. But um, it really doesn't matter. I think I'm going to pretty much have a pretty easy road. A uh, couple matches, I'll wait for the loser's bracket to work itself out, and then I'll bang the guy the last one. Should only have three matches. Should be nice and easy. Left and right handed, of course. It looks like he's dropped some weight. Does that, is that better for you? or? I am at 238 right now. I'm actually cutting a lot of weight out. The last time I saw you, 
What was your weight? Oh, probably 245, maybe closer to 250. What have you done? You look different. What, Just what happened? What'd leaning you do? out, trying to, trying to get rid of the, the loose weight. A lot more cardio, trim it out. So there's just solid muscle is what you're saying right there. Sure, can call it that. <laughs> well, of course it's better for me if if he's, I mean, if you, you know, associate the fact that he's lighter and weaker. But, you know, not often, I mean, John Brzezink's lighter, doesn't mean he's weaker. So it just depends. I mean, I don't, I've been, I've been sleeping with my wife, so I only know how strong I am and how strong she is. I don't sleep with Matt Gardner or Ron Bath or any of those guys, so... I'm not sure what their training regimen is if, uh, if they're dedicated as much as I am. And you want to know who's going to win? How, Me. How's that <laughs> feel, pulling that kind of wrist tight? It's set, invite only. You don't have to weed through 30 other competitors. You just got the top of the top of the top right there, ready to go. What does that feel like? It's, it, you know, you got to be intense when you first get in there, but it comes down to a draw. I mean, we're waiting on a draw. Two guys are going to get buys. Who's going to get the two buys? Hey, how you doing? Mohegan Sun, you are growing and growing. What is going on with you? Uh, You're just, a beast. I'm trying to get the top of the 242 class because we got Unified Nationals next week. Um, hope to actually wait, you know, come in tomorrow dressed about 253. I'm going to have a cheat meal tonight. Probably get as much pizza in me as I can. I won't be as, as lean, but I'll be, be thicker. I think we have a rough idea who should be in the first couple of places and who should be finishing third, fourth, and fifth. But when you got this, if you put me and Travis, or Matt and Travis, or me or Matt, or you burn off a couple of us, that opens the door up for Michael Todd. Well, even Eric Wolfell has been up and down in the sport. And if he's bringing his game, it, it, it does put a lot of, it, you know who you're pulling, you know you gotta be ready tomorrow. Your style is to kind of catch guys. Well, in all actuality, that is not the style that, I mean, it just happens that way. You know, I'd prefer to finish everybody quickly, but um, so, a lot of times I get the hit on me, and I've got a pretty quick hit most of the time, but, you know, generally if you can't finish me fast, you know, you're not going to be. So if I can hold on there and be anywhere in a comfortable position, you know, even if I'm a few inches from the pad as long as I'm in the center, and, uh, and if I'm in the center of the table, even if I'm down here, I, I, I feel great, you know. I just, I, I hate losing, you know. So, is there a person you'd like to match up with first? Oh, man, not, not really. Um, Cause like Matt and Travis and even Eric, I wouldn't mind pulling them just for me to be, I guess, classified the underdog and going right to the meat of the, meat of the tournament right off the bat. But then uh, I think Michael Todd and Tom Nelson are probably, if you're gonna call anybody the weaker of the class, that would be it. But they both want me so bad. They got they got heavy motivation. The other three probably have respect. Michael and Tom Nelson have just desire. They could care less if they did anything this weekend, I think, than beat me. Why that is, I don't know, because I'm thinking first. Yeah, it's very stacked class, especially if you go by like the pulling John rankings. The only, I mean, Everybody, you know, Tom Nelson and I are the two lowest ranked guys out of the top 20. So if we get a win over any of these top four guys that are ahead of us, you know, you got Travis is second on the rankings, Matt's third, Ron's fourth, and I believe Eric's sixth. So if we can get a win over any of those guys right-handed, then uh, it's got to bump us up in rankings a little bit. Does that morally affect you at all knowing that you're, you know, an underdog? Or does that, oh, hell no. Does that motivate no, man, you? No, I've been training hard for this. You know, it was unfortunate that this tournament actually happened the week before Nationals because I've been focused on training for Nationals. But, you know, with this Fox Sports coverage and everything, you, know, you couldn't turn down the opportunity to come here. John Brzezink, I heard, if one of you guys, one of you guys in your class didn't show up, that he'd pull both. Can he do that? Could, I mean, could he do you'd have to ask Fox if he can do that. He can't win them both. He can't win them both. No. So you're confident, you versus Brzezink? I'll kill John Brzezink right now. If he's 200, if he's 198 pounds, he has no chance. And he can't be Ron Bath either at that weight. Travis, where are we going to see you next? See me, uh, you'll see me tomorrow here at the Mohegan Sun. You'll see me Saturday at the Unified National Championships. And then you'll see me on ESPN very soon. Oh, I, I told John Bergson that if anybody dropped out of the heavyweight class, if, if he would consider me to pull, to pull both. So, but nobody, everybody, everybody showed up. So, I guess that I'm good. not.
you're feeling that good, you could just jump right in there. Yeah, I mean, I fell short in Vegas uh, back in April, and uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm, you know, I would enjoy that challenge. Travis says you don't have a chance. Yeah, I guess he would say that. Rob Dow says you wouldn't have a chance. Right now. At that weight against, why would he? Um, John, John fluctuates his weight between 198. He's having a hard time. He gets there easy enough, but it's not his typical weight. So he's he, like me. His weight, his normal weight is probably low 200s. Um, so really, why would he stay at 198 to prove he can beat us? Do I think he can come up and compete with us? Yeah. Do I think he would win? Probably. I don't think so. They're, they're fired up too. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have to say that. Then there's reality. It's a call to arms that turns into a battle of wills. For the second time on Best Dance, the very best collide on the most prestigious stage in the country. Did you steal my house? They all have different sides. Some smack talk. Get back to California! Some stare silently, and others simply smug. But they all have their eye on the same prize. There you go! 16 wrestlers, 6 champions, 1 night. The United States Arm Wrestling Championships on the best damn sports show period starts right here, right now. before heading home. Tonight, we present to you the U.S. Arm Wrestling Championships. And if you are brave enough, step inside the Wolf Den, where some of the best in the world go hand-to-hand -hand and arm-to-arm -arm over the next 60 minutes. Hi, everybody. Once again, I am Chris Rose, and tonight we promise to bring you what could be the most exciting arm wrestling tournament of 2005. My usual partner in crime, Rob Dibble, will be on throughout the evening to talk to the competitors before and after their matches. As for Sal and Rodney, unfortunately, they're not tough enough to stick it out. We had to send back to Los Angeles. We will see them next Monday. Now, don't worry, though. We do have you covered on both the table and inside the broadcast booth with two of the best around. And when you're talking about the best in this sport, you have to mention John Berzink. He is 41 years old, but he has more than 30 world titles to his name. As you can see, he's in outstanding shape. He'll be competing in both the left and the right pole tonight. Also, do not adjust the volume on your television set. <laughs> It is the mouth that roars. I love it! The mouth. The pride of West Virginia. Travis Bajan is back once again. Hey, when he talks, people listen. And even when they don't want to listen, he continues to talk. And so, of course, the uh, Chris, let me get things started here. Uh, actually, Travis, you just... He'll be fine. He, he took his meds today. He'll be good. He'll be good to go. We'll talk to Travis in a second. I want to turn to the classy man of this sport, John Berzink. And John, I, I love the tournament format tonight because as far as the men go, you only have two separate weight categories and only six competitors in each division. You're talking about the best of the best. Best of the best. There's no uh, prelims for these competitors to go through, so uh, there's not going to be any excuses. Um, but they have uh, some uh, tough competitors right out of the gate. And we're talking about big-time egos in this sport, which is why I turn back to this guy, Travis Bajan. Last time we saw you compete on Best Dam, you and Eric Wofell really got into it. I mean, have there been any stare-downs early on? What are we going to see in that battle? I've been trying to talk to him all week, but uh, he's not been too friendly, so I would expect uh, more of the same. A lot of intense action today, Chris. We're talking about a true hatred here? I'm, I think uh, I think yes. I think he has a bit of a problem with me. I don't. I can't understand why or how, but you know, I, I don't have control over everything. Okay. Now you guys are in separate weight categories. You are in 198 and, and less. And what are you weighing these days? About 330? Uh, a little lighter than that, around 275. But extremely ready. I really don't want to pick on the little guy, but hey, if the money's right, uh, I'll do it. So what he's saying is you guys might go arm in arm tonight. I'm game. If all he has to do is say yes, and I'll be there. Now, the great thing about this sport, I don't care what weight category you are in. You all play by the same rules. In fact, here they are. Now, the quickest way to get ejected in this double elimination tournament is to get two fouls. The most common are gaining an advantage when your elbow comes off the pad. Also, keep in mind, two false starts equal one foul. For sportsmanship and intentionally slipping the grip are fouls as well. Now, speaking of the grip, here's the lowdown. You have 60 seconds to get your own. When that doesn't happen, the zebras step in. Do not turn in. Do not turn in. Get out. Go. Go. And if all else fails, we 
bring out the big red strap. That usually does the trick. Ready, go! Travis Bajan, let's get it going. With the right hand at 198, you are looking at Kevin Bongard, six foot four out of the state of Utah, and Todd Hutchings, five foot eleven out of South Carolina. I'm thinking a huge advantage for Bongard because of the height. Is that true? No, absolutely no advantage in having a longer arm. So that means that I could arm wrestle you. Exactly. The referee would have us completely even height wise at the table. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Uh, anyway, Hutchings. And Bongard, about to get it going. Bongard training with John Berzink out there would really like to give Todd a match to help John out in the in the eighth side first bracket. You first, Todd. Kevin, you go to the front of that pocket. Watch your elbow. Referee's giving instructions. Trying to get him lined up in the center, get the wrist straight and right the both thumb knuckles Roll showing. Roll back here, Kevin. Don't start pulling yet. Okay. <laughs> We'll have to set him up here. Kevin Bongard really energetic trying to get things going here. Okay, John. Look at Hutchings. We haven't even started yet. He's already sweating up a storm. Hey, got a little problem with that, Chris. <laughs> you want to go towel him down? <laughs> That's not my job here. Ready, go. We are underway. Hutchings off to a quick start. And a flip. And you can see there, Bongard training with Brzezink there, very strong arm. They're going to slip out right in the center there. We'll strap them up. Who has the advantage with the straps? I believe Todd Hutchins has a bit quicker start, so he'll probably put put Kevin in a disadvantage. And um, it's kind of hard to maneuver with those straps on. Don't move. Woo! Ready, go! Go! Hutchings with their rope on guard, and Hutchings now turning. Can he pick up the win or not? They say he won. It looked a bit premature to me. Uh, we'll have to take a look at this replay. In a hook down, you see very close uh, Johnny Ferguson, maybe just a bit quick on that call. But nevertheless, Todd Hutchins continuing on undefeated. Merely the first step because everybody's trying to get a hold of this guy, John Berzink, an intimidating force. Well, I'm hoping that their their line of thinking is, oh, I'm you know I'm going against John Berzink and I'm maybe thinking about just giving it up. You know that help that works for me. Um, if they go up there and are just gunning for me and really have the confidence to go after me, then it you know that makes it, it tougher. But my experience is more just the opposite. They come up there and they're a little intimidated. Well, if there is one guy that may be able to get it done, it is Todd Hutchings. That's right. This is the match we've been waiting to see here. The replay from the Port the Plaza in April. Todd Hutchings. I spoke to Todd. He wants to try to get John in the straps here. That's his game plan. Let's see if he can uh, get it done. Why would he want to do that? Well, I think he has a problem with John's big, strong hand, so he wants to get it in the strap, so he doesn't have to worry about it. Well, he's on his way. Well, that's one way to get in the strap. <laughs> it seems like he elbow fouled a little bit there, lift that elbow up and jerked out, but he got away with it, so uh, smart move, Todd Hutchins. We'll strap him up. So, 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 so far, the game plan for Todd Hutchins working great. You can almost see a smile out of Hutchings, like saying, yeah, that was my game plan, and I've achieved it so far. All right, but now there's one more problem. Now he's hooked up to the greatest arm wrestler that ever lived. Let's see if he can get it done. Let's remember, John Persink had not lost a right-handed pole in this weight class in 20 years. Back then, Johnny Walker knocked him out. And Persink has got Hutchings down on the table, and it is over. Oh, a little something special for you as well. You can surprise John once, but once he knows who you are, getting a win on him is extremely difficult. As you can see here, great top roll, full hand control, in from the pad, there it is. We cannot crown John Persink the champion just yet. Let's keep in mind, all night long, this is a double elimination tournament. So a guy like Todd Hutchings will get another shot, perhaps, at John Persink. Right now, here are your standings for Zink. As usual, on top, Bongard, Hughes, 
Celiaris. They'll have to look forward to the left-handed pull at 198. Well, right now it is time for Todd Hutchings to walk back to the table where he will meet Jacob Abbott. Yes, it is uh, Simon Cowell's stand-in at American Idol. Jacob Babbitt out of Washington State. Very good left-handed arm wrestler. And I'll tell you the truth, right there with Todd Hutchins right-handed, I expect to see a great match here from Jacob Babbitt. Abbott beat Ready? Hughes and Bongard to reach this match. Great start by Todd Hutchins, sucking him deep into that hook. Very difficult to come back from this position. And it, it is over. Sorry. Hutchings apologizes to the referee for maybe the accidental headbutt. Yeah. Todd Hutchings did a deep hook there. Todd Hutchings showing that he's definitely John Brzezink's only competition under 200 pounds. Not yet. Well, he will have a chance to prove it. The finals of the right-handed 198 pull are coming up. And later on, Travis, you'll look at Ron Bat and Eric Waffel, Matt Gertner as well, as the big boys pull. It's the 198-pound right-handed final between John Berzink and Todd Hutchings. And let's remember what happened last time we saw these two go at it on Best Dam. It was back in April in Las Vegas. Hutchings and Berzink going hand-to-hand -hand for the first time ever. And Hutchings actually got the win. Todd Hutchings, his career started at that moment right there. He said, go. I just pulled straight back, and, you know, when the match started coming my direction, all of a sudden I was like, hey, you know, I might win this one. <laughs> I won that first match, and I really couldn't believe it. I was completely surprised. I've, I've never experienced that kind of explosive power from someone that weighed only 198 pounds. Of course, it, 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 it created a tremendous war between us, but that's, that's what arm wrestling is all about. That was definitely the high point of everything I've done so far, because that... That was unbelievable, and I think, you know, John was probably, you know, who's this guy? <laughs> Let's remember, though, John Berzink came back and then won two matches against Todd Hutchings and claimed the crown. Yeah, he did, and Todd's going to have to try to do the same thing. Big task for Todd Hutchings. Hutchings is going to have to win twice, and he didn't even get one done. Oh, there's an elbow foul there, Chris. Back it up. Elbow foul. John Berzink. A little too much side pressure aggression. Elbow must have came off the side here. We'll get a better look. Big hit, John Berzink. I don't know from that angle. Let's see from this angle. There it is. Just a little bit of daylight there on the side of the pad. And since that's John, we'll give him one foul. Two fouls count as a loss. So you're probably going to see John slow down a little bit here. He looks like he's in total control. Spread the shoulder up. Don't move. Ready, go! And there goes Brzezink. No foul that time. Chris, that's the best arm wrestler in the world right there, doing what he does. Ah, it's showing off that big right bicep as well. Add another championship to the mantle of John Berzink. Total control. Look at the aggression on his face. Hail to the king. And he also gets an interview with Rob Dibble. You make that look so easy. I mean, on average, it's about two, three seconds in each one of your matches. It's not that easy out there, is it? It went smooth today for me. I had a good draw. Um, Todd Hutchins is an incredible arm wrestler. He's got tremendous side pressure, arm strength. He didn't have quite the draw that I had. Um, feeling fresh, just revved up. Uh, I said, just felt great today. It was good to get uh, get that win over him. All right, now you won that right-handed division. What about the left-handed division? Left-handed division, I'm going to have a tough competitor in uh, Jacob Abbott. Uh, Every time we've ever arm wrestled left-handed, we've gone to a minute and a half, two-minute war, so um, I expect the same. All right, John, get up here. You're going to have to call this match between Travis Bajan and Matt Gertner. It's the heavyweight get it going in the right hand, and oh, you are looking at the mouth that roars. Travis Bajan, confident. But should he be? Last time, Matt Gertner outdueled him. It's always fun going up against Travis. It uh, definitely adds a little, little more electricity to the show. Uh, he's a great competitor, um, but I own him. I've beaten him just about every time that we've wrestled. So he, he's mine. And that includes last time on the Best Damn Sports Show period in the super heavy right-handed pole final. John Berzink has rejoined me in the broadcast booth. John, advantage goes to? Well, I don't know. Uh, 
Uh, looks like, Chris, to me that uh, Matt has lost a few pounds, so uh, this might be a little bit more of a challenge than he's expecting. Ready, go! And we are underway in a quick slip. Both competitors uh, look a little frustrated there. Travis had a little bit of control. He got his finger up a little higher. Um, they're going to go to the straps. And who has the advantage when it comes to the straps between the big boys? Well, Matt's been working on his top row, so he says anyway. Uh, but Travis is the master in the straps. He's got tremendous back pressure. Um, I don't know what uh, Matt's game plan is going to be here. He told me earlier that he was going to try to top row Travis, so uh, we'll see. What? Shouldn't he wait until the referee's tell him to go? That's, yeah. <laughs> well, they're jockeying for position. A uh, little intimidation going on here. Turn it. Travis looks comfortable. Ready, go. Matt. Wow, I would say real comfortable, John. Beautiful, beautiful. It looked, it looked to me like Travis was posting real hard, and then just drove him into a hook. Uh, he is literally salivating at the mouth, everybody. Uh, I'm not responsible for him when he's not sitting next to me. But that's a dominant performance. Very, very good win for Travis there. Uh, so now we move on to Tom Nelson and Michael Todd, two very evenly matched competitors in this weight division. Uh, east against West. Come on, Mike. What is that? Pull, Michael pull, pull, Todd. He's a strong hooker. Uh, Tom Nelson loves the top row, so this should be a, a unique conflict. And Nelson off to a quick start, and then he slips. And Nelson seemed a little peeved. Why? Tom, Tom gets his top roll in. Uh, Mike is able to push through it underneath. So they're going to go to the straps. Got to ask every time who has the advantage when the straps come out. Well, Tom Nelson's a better top roller, but uh, Michael Todd has gained quite a bit of weight, and I would expect he's going to have a little bit more strength advantage. Ready, go. We are underway. Nelson off to the early lead. He's got the top roll. He's got the leverage advantage. He's got uh, Michael Todd stretched out. Michael, uh-oh, it's going into a hook there. And here comes Todd. Big tricep, big tricep. And Todd is the winner. For all that bench press that comes in handy. Fighting all the way back. I thought maybe Michael Todd was done early on. No, he, he uses that strap and just starts putting on the pressure, putting on the old bench press. We call that a shoulder roller, Chris. It all looks painful to me. But it's less painful for Michael Todd, who ends up picking up the victory. Ah, it does the bicep shot. <laughs> Travis Bajan, the perfect record so far, as Todd, Nelson, and Wavell have all bowed out to this point. So coming up next, it is Matt Gerdner against the KG veteran, Ron Bass. Ron Bath, the old man, 43 years old, still doing it, still dominating. Makes you look young, John Persink. Oh, man, look at him. He makes it look easy against Gardner. Unbelievable hand strength there. Unbelievable. He just controls Matt right to the side. That is one strong hand right there. So Ron Bath eliminates Matt Gardner. Can he hand Travis Page in his first loss of the evening? We'll find out after this. You're getting a good look at Ron Bath getting ready for the big boy final. That means he is going to stare down and try and conquer Travis Bajan. Travis has a tendency to fire people up. He likes to talk because um, he, he knows he gets in a lot of people's head. Uh, I've been around the sport long enough. I've had more people talk to me and talk trash to me, so I can live with it. Um, it's just fun to listen to him and watch him. This is the finals matchup. Ron Bath will have to win twice to conquer Travis Bajan. John Berzig, you've stood across the table from Travis Bajan. Do you, do you phase him out, or do you actually hear the trash Well, talk? all the trash talk comes uh, all morning long, all afternoon long, so uh, it's not the trash talk up on the table. It's all the stuff that Ron has to listen to uh, weeks before this event. Ready, go! <laughs> wow, well, not much to say there, except Travis Bajan was flat-out dominant. Unbelievable hit. Took Ron Bath right out of position. Quick pin. And, and a little different for Travis. He's not uh, not opening his mouth or yelling. Maybe showing a little bit of respect for the 43-year-old Ron Bath. Travis, a lot of people might say that you're a left-handed specialist, but uh, you got one of the veteran guys, 25 years in the business, Ron Bath. You put him away quite easily. What does that mean? Uh, well, it means exactly what I've been telling people. I'm the best arm wrestler in the world. I don't really care what 
category you want to put me in left, right, um, over 40, under 40. I've said it before. I'm the best. But I'll tell you this. I grew up 13, 14 years old, loving Ron Bass, wanting to meet him, just wanting to meet him. And then today I get to beat him on this big show. So as much as I hate to see him lose, I'm extremely happy to be here. All right. So now what do you have left for the lefties? I have a tough match with the crowd's been waiting for. Big Eric Raphael's going to try to put me in a bear hug and put me in a headlock. But hopefully he just can't beat me in arm wrestling. Maybe he can get me in everything else. All right, we'll see the men later. Right now, the women taking center stage, Cynthia Yerby, Mary McConaughey, Cindy Looney, and Ellie Nelson. Batting leadoff, it'll be Yerby against McConaughey. And Yerby, very interesting. 53 years old, didn't start arm wrestling till the age of 38. She watched one of her students partake in this sport. She fell in love with it. Yeah, Chris, I don't know if these two have ever met before on the arm wrestling table. Ready, go. They are underway. Evenly matched. Turns it over and picks up the win in. <laughs> As the guns ablaze it. Yeah. Remember, this is a double elimination tournament, so Cynthia Yerby now moves to the B side of the bracket where she will face Kelly Nelson, the sister of Tom. Tom Nelson, who competed just last week, so I don't know how much Kelly's going to have left, but. Uh... Ready, go. And Yerby gets it done in a hurry. What was the move here, John? Well, she just gets on her tricep, opens up uh, Kelly's bicep. Uh, it's, it's really tough to pull from your bicep like that when someone's got that kind of advantage on you. So Cynthia Yerby is going to get another shot at that lady, Mary McConaughey, who looks very focused right now. How tough is it for somebody like Cynthia Yerby to come back and win two against somebody that just basically dominated? Yeah, you would think the advantage would go with Mary now. She's uh, got the confidence. She's got one win. Cynthia's got to be thinking about that uh, advantage, Mary. The referee's helping out with the grip right now. Once again, Yerby has to win twice to take home this right-handed title. Ready, go. And she gets oh. one. Oh. Mary lets down. I don't know if she, she let down her guard, but uh, Cynthia, hard hit. Does that happen? Do you tend to let your guard down when you know you have one to lose? <laughs> Not me, Chris. <laughs> So now winner takes all in this rubber match for the right-handed championship for the women. Mary definitely looks a little more focused this time. Ready, go! They are underway. Makati is going to end up the victor. A game effort by Cynthia Yerby, but it was not enough. Repeated the first match. She got the advantage and she hung on to it. Took over after a few seconds and picks up the championship. She's with our Rob Dibble. So, Mary, the women did not take a backseat to the men on the Best Damn Sports Show. That was outstanding. You, you knew you had to lose twice to lose the championship right there. Is that anything that you psych yourself out knowing you can lose one? Sometimes I think you get a little sloppy knowing that you can uh, take the one loss. Um, when you know, when you already have the one loss, you can't make any mistakes. Well, you look like you're very strong in the right-handed division, but you got to win a couple now in the left-handed division. You got anything left? I do. I got tons left on my left. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Well, you look like you're having a lot of fun out there. It's great. It's a good day. Thank you very much. All right, John, get out of the booth. You won the right-handed competition. Now you're going to go for the left. Will Todd Hutchins stand in your way? Find out when Best Damn rolls on. Hi, everybody. Once again, I am Chris Rose. Inside the Wolf Den, as you can see, the atmosphere is electric. Now, this is a sport that continues to grow in popularity thanks to competitors like Travis Bacon and John Perzink. Also, Todd Hutchins. I'm Todd Hutchings. I'm from Monticello, South Carolina. I'm a mechanical engineer. I've only been arm wrestling since 2000. So I was on the internet looking up archery clubs, archery, and then there's an arm wrestling lane right next to it. Probably all men think that they're good arm wrestlers because they did it in high school. <laughs> and look at that move by Hutchings right off the top and a quick pin. When I took down John Bajink, I was shocked. When I got the first match over him, <laughs> that was unbelievable. It's still kind of unbelievable. I'm honored to be here because you picked the best people out of each way class. And I'm honored to be in that list. I'm, I'm, I'm chasing John Brazil. My goal tonight, tomorrow, for every single year until I die, I want to beat that man one more time. <laughs> you know, that's all I, I don't care about the money. I don't care about anything else. I want to beat John Brazil one more time. <laughs> 
Well, earlier tonight, that man Todd Hutchings was the runner-up to John Bersink in the right-handed final. Now it is the left-handed pull for the 198-pounders and taking on Jacob Abbott. I am rejoined by Travis Bajan. We'll see you compete a little bit later, big boy. Congratulations on the right-handed championship, by the way. Thank you, Chris. So now, who has the advantage of the left-handed pull here, Travis? I tell you, the rest of these guys in the field drop off a bit left-handed. However, Jacob Abbott, every bit as good left as right. A little more. Ready, go! They are underway. And wow, a dominant performance by Jacob Abbott. As expected, great hand control, top roll. Down at 10 o'clock, brings the shoulder in, tricep down. Great match, Jacob Abbott. That's Todd Hutchings, far from done, because once again, this is a double elimination. I like it. We are looking at the right-handed champion from earlier this evening, John Berzink, taking on Jacob Abbott. And oddly enough, John Berzink, as great a champion as he is, has never beat Jacob Abbott in a left-handed pole. That's right, Chris, and I talked to John Berzink backstage, really nervous about this match. And a quick slip by both competitors. Both guys trying to get hand positioning results in a slip. We'll put the strap on, Chris. Strap's an advantage for John Brzezink because of that strength. Well, he, 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 he does have maybe a stronger arm. However, you know, you can't doubt Jacob Abbott. He's beating John every time. So this will be an upset if John's able to do this. Ready, go! And here comes Brzezink. He's got a slight advantage at this point. Yeah, yeah, he does. Top rolling, close to the pad. And there's the win. There it is. The elusive victory. Maybe that's why you see that huge smile from John Verzink. Yeah, John beating Jacob Abbott on the biggest stage. That's just, again, that's John Verzink at his best. But you can see there, Jacob Abbott really close. Good left-hand arm power. So here are the standings. John Verzink. The lone unbeat competitor in this category. Three others, though, trying to take him down, including these two men. Todd Hutchings. We saw what he did in the right-handed pole. And now Kevin Bongard, who is back. A good friend of John Persink. They both live in Utah. And an avid uh, hunter as well. Yeah, big game hunter out in Utah. You pay him a good price, he'll take you out, get you a mule deer. Uh, Bobcat, just about anything Utah has to offer. How about uh, taking down a bald 39-year-old from South Carolina? Is that that's on his, his resume? Yeah, that's his next task. Well, a slip, so we're going to break out the straps. Pretty even match. Kevin trying to rotate Todd with a bit more hand control. Once again, Kevin Bongard, six foot four, 190 pounds. He doesn't look like your prototypical arm wrestler. It looks like somebody who should be working in a hardware store telling you to clean yeah. up in aisle six. Yeah, like it or not, he's the best 187-pound arm wrestler in North America. The loser of this match is out for the evening. And Hutchings off to a great start. And asking the referee, is it over? The ref says, no. It is now. Todd Hutchings with a good win there. Tough match. You see Todd losing his hand a little bit, kind of out of room, begging the referee. One more tricep, back up to the center. Huge hit one more time. And there it is. So what does that earn Todd Hutchings? That earns him a trip to Jacob Abbott. Well, once again, does Abbott have the advantage because he is considered a, a better left-handed puller? Yeah, I would say Jacob controlled Todd pretty good. I expect more of the same here, Chris. Now, remember, Toddzilla beat Abbott twice right-handed. Can he come back and do it left-handed? The loser here is done. And the winner gets to go pull against John Brzezink. Ready, go! And look at Abbott with a strong pull. Yeah, Chris looked like a replay from the first match. Excellent hand position. Brings the shoulder in, triceps down the finish. Todd Hutchings finished runner-up in the right-handed pole. He finishes third in the left-handed. So now Jacob Abbott staring down John Verzink, who is looking to double up his titles. Find out if he can pull it off next. I'm Matt our coverage of the United States Arm Wrestling Championships, the left-handed final of the 198-pound division. John Verzink already won the right-handed pole. How will he do right now against Jacob Abbott? Travis Bajan rejoins me here in the broadcast booth. Abbott with an advantage, yes? Well, I think Abbott had an advantage, but John took care of him in the preliminaries. Uh, Jacob's got a big hill to climb here. John Brzezink's been working that left out pretty hard. 
Jacob Abbott has to win twice to knock out John Verzink, who is down to just his thumb here, Travis. Yeah, that's a nasty way to pull, but now you see John getting a lot better control of the hand. Jacob's going to try to slip out, push with that tricep, and he's able to get out. We'll strap him up, Chris. So that was strategy to pull out there. Definitely strategy. You see John totally have total control of Jacob's hand there, so slipping out the only option for him. How painful is it when a guy's got you by just your thumb, by the way? I wouldn't know. I don't let people like grab a hold of my thumb like that. Pretty sloppy arm wrestling on John Brzezink's behalf. That's what I love about you. Modesty, my, my friend. And, oh, Brzezink finished it quickly. The bigger the stage, the more prepared the great John Brzezink is. Showing why he's the best. And that's about as animated as you will see John Brzezink. Been watching Travis Bajan a lot. <laughs> I'm sure he's been taking notes, big fella. Trying so to be a star. Congratulations to John Perzink. Makes it two for two tonight. Well, John, congratulations. Best damn champion from both sides. And uh, you made it look easy out there. You said that Jacob Abbott was probably going to be your toughest competition. You got him in the finals, and you put him down pretty easy. Yeah, I guess I'm uh, jacked up a little higher than I thought I was. That's the easiest easiest time I've had with uh, Jake. Where does this rank up there in your accomplishments? Well, left-handed, I mean, that's the ultimate. I mean, he, he's the man, in my opinion, uh, left-handed, other than Travis, you know, in the Super Heavy. Anyway, it's, um, I've been training my left a lot more lately, and uh, I'm hoping to uh, go after even Travis. Well, Travis is about to go after the left-handed pole championship, and you know they say actions speak louder than words, unless you're this guy. And what the first trash talk is, is to just a big yell scream, just to let him know that uh, he's got more or less a caged animal across the table from him. And people listen to him. Sam! Oh. Definitely adds a little more electricity to the show. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you to calm down. It'll be over quick. You don't know me! Not the best of friends, to put it that way. Get back to California! Please show me everything that you can possibly do to try to beat me. So then when I do beat you, there's no excuses. Wake up! It, it's frustrating at times. He thinks he's the greatest. You better let me know! It definitely brings it to a different level. Yeah. That's his game. You want to fight him at his game, then you just made the mistake. I'm the best arm wrestler here. Well, now he gets to prove it against Matt Gerdner in the left-handed pole. John Berzink has rejoined me in the broadcast booth. First of all, congratulations on the double-double. Thank you, Chris. And secondly, do you hear Travis Bajan? Travis Bajan, the current world champion left-handed. I just sure hope he doesn't underestimate uh, Matt Gerdner. I pulled go. with him up. Oh, uh, I don't think he did, John. <laughs> When, wow. when a match ends that quickly, what happens? Well, just just total hand control there. Just, Matt couldn't even pull with his hand flattened out like that. All right, we'll see Travis in just a bit. But now, John Berzink, you're going to enjoy this. The over 40 crowd going at it. Eric Ravel, Ron Bass. Wow, the Masters. Ron Bass against the big bear, Eric Ravel, left-handed champion. If Bass loses, he is out of the left-handed pole. Eric Wolfell, he's he's got to have the biggest hand in this class. He's just he's just huge. And how much of an advantage is that? Ready, go! Matt. Apparently a lot. Wow. <laughs> he takes Ron Bass in his strength, in a hook, and pins him. Textbook here, huh? Well, you would think Eric would actually try to top roll Ron. Ron is Ron's technique is a hook, but he just powers right through him in his uh, in his strongest point. So Eric Waffel trying to work his way to a left-handed championship and well on his way so far as, well, Bajan is nipping at his heels. Now Travis is going to get a shot at Eric Waffel. And last time back in April on Best Damn, these two went John. Yeah, uh, Travis Bajan, I talked to him earlier. Um, he brought up a good point. Uh, Eric Wolfell is like uh, moving a, a couch. It's not It's not real heavy, but it's just really difficult to get a hold of. Don't move. Foul. Travis is bowing his wrist out. A foul on Travis Bajan for bowing his wrist. What does that mean, John? Well, you, you, he needs to protect his own wrist, so he wants a little bit of a bow. He, he just wants to get a hold of Eric, and it's real difficult. Eric is so big and so thick. His hand is so massive. And he slipped. What, what happened here? It looked like a slip, but Travis Bajan seemed to be celebrating. Well, tough to get a hold of Eric Wafell. They're going to go to the strap, so it'll be... Uh, They'll be, they'll be tied together, so there won't be no slippage now. 
We haven't heard a whole lot out of Travis Bajan at this table. They both look uh, extremely serious. Well, there goes Travis. Just talking to the referee. He wants to see his thumb knuckle. He doesn't want Eric to get too high. Ready, go! Beautiful. A quick win by Travis Bajan. Beautiful hit. Well, wait a minute, Chris. What is the referee calling? An elbow foul. An elbow oh, foul. That, that's Bajan good. couldn't believe it. Where? Oh, that it didn't did happen. I don't know about that, Chris. From that angle, it looks like Travis's elbow was still over the top of the pad. Yeah, he looks disgusted. Well, he can't believe it either. Elbow came off. Well, Travis Bajan is standing by with our Rob Dibble to clear this up. Travis, what happened out there? It looked like you had him twice. Yeah, I don't know. I got a tough referee's grip movement foul, which I didn't think I moved. And then, I don't know. You were there. Did you see anything? I didn't see anything. Now you got to go to the loser's bracket. Do you mind? Well, yeah, I mind, but uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to keep fighting. I'll be all right. You're going to keep fighting right now against that man, Matt Gertner. Whoever loses this match is done. Winner moves on to face Eric Waffel and then would have to beat Waffel twice. Go. Come on, man. And Bajan Matt. making quick work of Eric Gardner. Very calm. You can see he had the confidence. He, he pulled Matt earlier. Very subdued Travis Bajan. I don't think he likes being in the loser's bracket. Well, now he'll get a chance to knock off Eric Waffel. The left-handed championship is next. Arm Wrestling Championships continue for Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Left-handed heavyweight pole, Eric Wabell going against Travis Bajan. And Travis, yeah, he's uh, last year he tries every dirty trick in the book, so... He's, you know, we're okay together, just we don't... <laughs> not the best of friends, to put it that way. Well, John Persink, Travis Bajan fouled out in their previous meeting earlier tonight. Already, Eric Waffel has picked up a pair of fouls here, so whoever wins this poll wins this championship. Travis is dead serious. Look at him. He's, he's coiled like a cobra, ready to strike. But it is Waffel who strikes quickly and wins the left-handed championship. Wow, I don't know what Travis was thinking. It looked like he tried to hook Eric. Obviously, it didn't work. Was it a poor choice in strategy? Poor choice. Uh, Travis is a top roller. I don't know what he's trying to do, hook, uh, hooking Eric Waffel. Eric just, just took him over the top. Eric Waffel getting it done, and now he's with our Rob Dibble. I was worn out just watching that. What, what is going on in there when you're out there with Travis? So much going on. There's just uh, head games and techniques and... And it's just so close. I guess he didn't feel good doing the top roll, so he tried to get me sneaking the hook and trick me. And I just love that, so that's what happened. Congratulations to Eric Waffel. Now the ladies back taking center stage. Looney and Nelson have already been eliminated. It is down to Cynthia Yerby and Mary McConaughey. Cynthia Yerby, full-blooded Native American, 53 years old, just started arm wrestling at the age of 38. McConaughey won the right-handed pull earlier this evening. This is a rematch of that final. And Yerby, who needs just one more win for the victory, gets it. Wow, Chris, a little payback. Yerby takes to the left-handed uh, left class. He didn't even look at her opponent once until she finished her off. Congratulations to Cynthia Yerby. She earns the win in an interview. Well, you couldn't get her right-handed, but you got a lot of payback there left-handed. How does it feel? Oh, that was sweet. It was sweet. It was just awesome. I don't know how to explain it, but uh, yeah. I wanted this one really bad because she beat me right, so, you know, it was revenge. But she's the best. Uh, she's so powerful, and she's just a legend in arm wrestling, and I was proud to arm wrestle her. Congratulations, Cynthia Yerby. Hey, guys, a little surprise for you. Coming up next, the greatest of all time against the greatest in his own mind. That's next. We are inside the Wolf Den for the United States Arm Wrestling Championship. And a little bonus coverage for you tonight as Travis Bajan takes on John Berzig. John, you ready? Travis is uh, the new, young, boastful kid that thinks he's the greatest. You know, John Berzig. It's John Brzezink. He's the greatest ever. No one can ever, you know, say anything about him, mess his legacy up in the slightest. Uh, we've competed against each other maybe a dozen times now. I think he's got one or two wins against me. I think he's also in the twilight years of his career, so when you're 40, it's close to hanging up, you know. I mean, you can ride it out a little longer, but it's almost over. 
I will remain an impartial judge. These are my broadcast brothers. Just keep in mind, Berzink outweighed by about 75 pounds. And look at the crowd. Wavell, Celiaris, Abbott, Bath, all looking on with extreme interest. It's best two out of three. In the, well, there's one. And look at Berzink just kind of throw his hands up like what happened. We actually do need to show you a replay because it happened so quickly. You might have missed it the first time around. So now they have switched hands to the table. Berzink needs to win twice to come back against the agent. Ready, go! And that doesn't happen. Congrats to Travis Bajan, who takes care of John Berzink. But it is John Berzink who is really the big winner tonight, winning the right and left pole. Both men are with Tibbs. Travis, how'd you do the victory? Um, just stay tight and won, and uh, thank God this man's been on the diet trying to make 198. So I'm extremely pleased. Still a little upset that I lost left-handed, but uh, this little bit of money for this overall will uh, make up the difference. <laughs> so I'm happy. John, you look like you could never get comfortable out there against Travis. What was wrong? I wanted to try to top roll with him. Um, we got in the straps. We're setting up high. A little difficulty uh, getting uh, set in the straps. And uh, just with all the, uh, the back and forth, the referee's grip, uh, my forearm just got too pumped. Uh, I, have to, I have to hand it to him. He's got a ton of back pressure. I mean, I just, I just couldn't handle his back pressure. Special thanks to all three of you men, John Perzink, Travis Bajan, and Rob Dibble. Great job tonight. And also, huge props to our friends at Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Come out and visit. We had a great time all week. Also, special thanks to the Professional Arm Wrestling Conference and John Ferguson as well for a fabulous night of this terrific sport. Monday night, we are back in Los Angeles for Frank Caliendo Comedy Night. Last five, six years, I've been having problems with what they call golfer's elbow. You know, that tendon where it attaches that, that bone uh, has, has probably calcified and it's got so much scar tissue uh, from, from arm wrestling all these years that it was uh, it was painful to put any kind of pressure on my hand or, or my forearm. And uh, I've gone through a bunch of different therapies, you know, trying to get rid of it, but it just wouldn't seem to go away. And I almost kind of gave it up, thinking that, well, it's time for me to really seriously think about quitting the sport. It's, it's not healing. And then this, this, the last, this last year, it's uh, been feeling better. I did some polo therapy about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, didn't really see any benefit from it initially. Um, three, four months after, it started feeling better. I was able to start lifting weights and uh, putting pressure on it without it being aggravated. And uh, here I am, back to, to almost my old form, you know. You give, give me another six months, and if I can continue to pull as hard as I've been able to pull in the last six months, um, I'll be ready to ready to take on any heavyweight there is. Oh, yeah. The coverage for the sport is phenomenal with these caliber of guys. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, because, you know, this Fox Sports coverage, I got uh, ANSI, Advanced Nutrient Science Incorporated Company, to sponsor me for the event. We've got this extreme shock stuff. It's a uh, hell. I hit 495 on the bench uh, last week, or th actually this week, on Monday of this week, and then uh, followed up with 405 for six, and then 315 for 24 reps. So I've got good explosive. 315, 24 reps. Yeah, fresh. I could probably get 26 or 27. But... You are freaking done. Oh, I'm excited, man, because you know the ESPN coverage we got from National last year. Everybody's been coming up. With it. You're, you're not the sorry, I'm ESPN. And I was pushing that I was in Ron's class because because of him, you know, that class got featured. And I'm like, yeah, I was the, I was the one that got beat. But uh, hopefully tomorrow I can uh, change that a little bit. You know, Ron's going strong. He came here to win. Uh, you know, I've got the win over him left handed at Nationals. Tomorrow's going to be a tough record because he's got a vile left handed. i got to pull Eric Wolfell, who's, you know, one of the most dominant left handed guys around. So yes. After this, we're going to Nationals next week. Next week, Arkansas. Three weeks in a row, arm wrestling. Right. You got to hit it. One after the other. Hit it. Can you guys do that? Can your arms? Just got to stay healthy. You got to keep your body healthy. You just got to keep all the toxins out. Put the good stuff in. Keep the bad stuff out. And just, just stay healthy. You going to buy nationals? Yes, I am. I'm going to be pulling the 242-pound weight class for the first time in so many that, years. Does that mean that Matt Gurner is going to Japan? <laughs> 